Quita Small Finance Bank is the next management on the show. The asset quality continues to deteriorate. Q4 uh, FY24 disbursements were also on the lower side year to year. Uh, PN Vasudevan, the MD and CEO of Equita Small Finance Bank, is with us. Uh, Mr. Vasudevan, thanks a lot for joining in. Always uh, good speaking with you. You know, this asset quality deterioration is something I want to talk about because gross NPAs are at about 2.6%. Um, uh, what led to that? And if you can just tell us about what the way forward is, what's the target gross NPA by the end of FY25? Yeah. Hi, good morning. Um, so, uh, you know, we are, I believe that Equitas, we have come back to the near normal level of the pre-COVID uh, scenario in terms of our portfolio quality. Um, if you look at the growth NPA between the third and the fourth quarter, it's gone up by about 14 basis points. Um, out of this 14 basis points, there was a one-time effect because, uh, you know, we had sought a clarification and RBI has clarified that uh, in, in case of co-borrower, uh, you know, any agreement where a co-borrower becomes an, I mean, when an account becomes NP and there's a co-borrower in that account, and then any other agreement where the co-borrower is a borrower or a co-borrower, those also need to be classified as an NPA. That's something that uh, we had got a clarification from RBI. And that had a one-time effect on the NPA because we did that in the month of March. So that uh, came to about uh, 10, 11 basis points of that NPA. So out of a 14 basis points increase, about 10 to 11 has really come from that. So more or less the GNP otherwise has uh, remained steady. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, pre-COVID also our GNP used to be around 25 to 2.6. And today mm -hmm. it currently continues to be at that same level. So I believe mm -hmm. that uh, more or less we are back to our normal levels. Back to your normal levels would be what? What is the gross NPA that you're targeting by the F, uh, end of FI25? Uh, and where do you see, in, do you see incremental stress coming into the book? And if yes, where from? Yeah, so we expect that our JNP should be at the same levels, two and a half to two point six is where we should expect for FI twenty five. And uh, none of the portfolio segments where we operate uh, are showing any particular stress level. So I don't think we we are really having any concern on any particular segment. Uh, and this is a very much uh, kind of a normal scenario for us. Okay, all right. Hi, Mr. Vasudevan. Uh, good morning and good to see you, Ben. Give us an outlook in terms of growth. What is the growth you are penciling in? Which segments will fire up that growth? And also, what about the NIMS? You know, uh, the NIMS, I think they're holding. Uh, it was There was a bit of a dip on a sequential basis. So where does it move from here on? Yeah, so on advances growth, I think we have been uh, consistent in our communication that uh, we should be looking at around a 25% uh, uh, growth on a medium-term basis. Uh, so that's something that we are, we are geared for, and we should be able to look at that going forward. In terms of name, yes, there has been a reduction uh, through the year. Uh, we started last year at, uh, we ended last year at 9%. That is 2000, I mean, 23 FI, we ended at 9%. And uh, 24 FI, FI24, we are ending it at about 8.16% for the quarter end. And for the full year, it is 8.35%. So there's been a drop. And that drop is largely because we had an increase in interest rate of nearly 90 basis points through the last year. And uh, uh, parallel to that or simultaneous to that, we also did a lot of work on reducing our uh, CD ratio. You know, we started the last year at about 100% and we ended the last year at about 87%. So that was a large amount of work we did. That's why you see our deposit grew by about 43% uh, against an uh, advanced growth of 23%. So most of the impact of CD ratio and the interest cost uh, repricing has been done in the last year. And uh, so, believe, so we believe that this year, uh, that exit of 1.6% NIM that we exited at, uh, we should be able to look at a NIM anywhere between 8.1% to 8.15% for this year. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, give us some more clarity then. The credit costs going ahead, what should it uh, uh, look like? If you could give us a guidance for this year. So um, last year, our credit cost was 1.01% on advances. And um, historically, our credit cost has been in the range of 1.2 to 1.25 percent on advances. That's been our normal uh, experience all these years. And I think uh, we are very close to that. So this year also we should pencil in a credit cost on advances of anywhere between 1.2 to 1.25. Okay. Uh, on the rural side, can you tell us uh, any stress that you're seeing in terms of rural loans right now? 
Um, see, for us, uh, microfinance, we have nearly about 40% uh, of our book on the rural. The remaining 60 mm. is largely semi-urban and urban. And outside of that, um, uh, you know, our commercial vehicles will have uh, some presence in the rural. Uh, but otherwise, the remaining is largely on the urban and semi-urban. And uh, in our own portfolio, actually, we don't see any difference in portfolio behavior between rural and uh, semi-urban urban. Okay. And you've been shifting your focus away from NBFCs to some of the smaller businesses, right? So what is the segment that's looking the best for you right now? And what's the outlook on growth? So we used to finance NBOCs. We used to give loans to NBOCs earlier, but that's a very tactical stuff. You know, we were sitting on 25, 26% capital equity at a point in time, and uh, the rates were also kind of giving us a decent return. Uh, but today, our capital equity has come down to 21.7%. So we are not really sitting on large surplus of uh, capital to allocate to, you know, uh, all businesses. So we are trying to be prudent in our allocation. So NBOC, since it's not really a part of our strategy, it's just part of our tactical stuff. So we have just kind of slowed down on uh, NBOC lending. And you should see the more of that NBOC portfolio actually coming down over the next few quarters. Uh, but otherwise, our growth has been strong in all our other segments. Microfinance grew by about 20% and the rest of the book grew by about 24%, giving us an overall uh, growth of 23 our flagship program, of course, is our small business loans, which is uh, almost 38% of our book, and that continues to do extremely well. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Vasudevan, final question then before I let you go. Uh, you know, you're saying that the cost of funds, that seems to be bottoming out. Your CD ratio is pretty much in check. What should the ROA look like? What is the target out there? That's point number one. And you've repeatedly mentioned, you know, that your focus is on getting yourself tech savvy, you know, and tech ready for the future. That will involve some cost as well. So what will the cost to income ratio look like? ROA and cost to income ratio. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we expect a further about 8 to 10 basis points increase in our uh, interest cost, uh, by which time most of the old deposits should have got repriced. And so the cost of funds will kind of become a steady state after that. And our CD ratio, as I mentioned, we are at about 87. And we want to bring it down to 85 by March 25, which is a 2% over the rest of the year. So it will not have much of an impact on him this year, unlike last year. Uh, and uh, because of this, um, and the fact that our yield on advances, yield on disbursement has actually gone up by 1% over the last one year. You know, at 18.75%, it's been going up over the last one year. And there will be a lag effect of that on the advances. You know, it takes about two quarters, three quarters for the advances to start showing that increase in uh, yield. So a combination of all of this, we believe, should help us maintain uh, our steady state ROA. You know, we, last year our ROA was 1.99%. I believe that we should be able to maintain that more or less going forward. And in terms of uh, cost income and our investment yes. in technology, there are three areas we have been investing in technology. One is customer acquisition, second is customer experience, and third is internal controls. You know, we are also spending a lot of money and a lot of uh, technology being deployed to improve our internal controls and uh, making it automatic uh, straight through processing. And all of this we have put out in our presentation also. We are expecting to invest about 520 crores over a three-year period on all these parameters. Um, so we don't really expect our cost income to dramatically come down. Uh, we will still be doing a lot of investments to build the bank uh, for the future. Uh, so our cost income, which is about 62% in the fourth quarter, should remain steady between 62 to 65 percent or for the next year also. Mm. Mr. Vasudevan, cost of funds will go up before they flat, flatten out, right? That's essentially what you said, 8 to 10 basis That's points. Eight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. We still have some old deposits so yeah. still maturing. So that will be an 8 to 10 basis points impact. Good conversation, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, time here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate it. Uh, so that's uh, Equita Small Finance Bank with some perspective and uh, lots of numbers for F525.